let me introduce myself. I've been trying to join you guys for a while now. And I initially wanted to join you guys on my phone, but I saw the network was hectic. So I decided using my laptop. I'll go straight to the point. I am Jesse Mgaji. I am from Nigeria. I've been to Niger, the country that just had a coup. I've been to the country and I'm a police officer here in Nigeria. Uh, let me just reach. start from let me just start from the beginning. We Africans, we are tired of the West. I'm sorry if anybody's from the West here. I'm very, very sorry. I'm just being sincere. We are tired with the West. This is okay. Let me use Nigeria for example. Once our politicians become popular, you will see a politician that doesn't have a passport we start traveling abroad. For what? You became popular without the effort of the West. Once you want to contest, okay, this is what they normally do to them. You want to contest for a post? Okay. You have to come and strike a deal with the devil. Now let me do it. Let me put it this way. Okay, Nigeria is rich with crude oil. If you are doing a campaign that um, you will build refinery, you will um, refine Nigerian crude oil, refine Nigerian product, they will support you. And then they will take you to the West. You will say you are going for medical treatment or whatever. That's what surprised me. When they are sick, when they are, when they are not yet contesting, we treat them here in Nigeria. And all of a sudden, a president can only be treated abroad. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, this is it. They do it like this. You want to become the president of Nigeria? Yes. What will you do for us? That's the West asking you. Now, if let me use medicine. If in a year, Nigeria only need one billion naira worth of drugs from the West, they'll be like, okay, if we support you, you become the president of Nigeria, you will promise us to be at least buying 10 billion naira worth of drugs, which the country needs one billion naira. Now, in a situation where you don't keep to the promise, they either bring military, uh, bring a revolution, protest, military coup. This is the funniest part. Now, if you can keep to the promise, you are buying what you don't need as a country. You understand? Now, if you keep to the promise, it's a problem. Your people will be in starvation. If you don't keep to the promise, your people... Uh, if you keep the promise, your people will be in starvation. If you don't keep to the promise, there will be no peace in your country. I don't blame Nigeria, to be frank. They would have done this long ago. Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria is fucking poor. Fucking poor. Extremely poor. A whole country. They only experience rain three times a year. Three times a year in that country. Three months, sorry. Three months a year. It's uncalled for. And again, they say we should go to school. I can tell you that in every African family, there are at least three graduates. At least three graduates. Now we are educated and we now know what they know. They say we should study economics. We studied it. We should do geography. We did it. We should do, um, <laughs> what is it called? Um, um, uh, banking and financing. We did it. Now we now know what they know even better than they are. Now, this is what Russia and China comes in. At first, they wanted painting plenty, plenty us black like our um, China is giving you death trap and the rest. It was a hoax just to like derail us from China. But later on, we realized sometimes the devil you know is not actually the best option. Try a new devil. Like seriously. The Chinese and the Russia are more sincere when doing a business. If a Chinese gives you a contract to build a bridge they'll give you a clause you are taking one billion dollar to build a, a one billion dollar to build a bridge yes we our engineers will build a bridge for you we'll finance it you want a bridge we'll build it you understand now if the west wants to give you one billion dollar to build a bridge they will say okay we're well, giving you this one billion dollar you collect the one billion dollar and they will frustrate you, make sure that you don't build the bridge. Now, they will make sure that they give the contract to the most corrupt politician or the most corrupt individual recommended that has in their own people to like eat the money. And then the government will be in debt to pay a debt that, that, that the purpose was never met. 
did you guys know how many billions how many billions nigeria borrowed to build refinery and yet till today nigeria don't have one functioning refinery <laughs> no seriously we have borrowed more than on three different <laughs> occasions we don't have one single refinery this is what we do we mine our just 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 look at how crazy this is we mine our crude oil no problem we export our crude oil to them no problem they refine the crude oil no problem when they bring the crude oil back as finished pro product that's where the drama begins now there's oil bunker on the way <laughs> there was oil <laughs> Um, no, for him, no, we, for we, for him and we made a, we made a video about uh, Angola and it's China. Crazy. Well, uh, um, Voz do Povo is here, so he I, I hope he intervenes right away. Um, so I, I, I we made this video, which uh, which Adovi as well soon probably wait, we'll um, we'll um, see if it everything is all right to publish. It was, I think, it was an amazing video. We learn a lot. And which shoe? So, Ter Hemen, how is the experience? Because Nigeria and Angola are the, the most in debt countries with China. How is that? How is that experience? How how good or how bad has things become since the Chinese came and invested so much in your country? Very good. At the last time I checked, Nigeria was owing about close to close to approximately. 50 trillion dollars if not mistaken sorry no 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 yes no 50 billion dollars yes 50 billion dollars not trillion. sorry 50 billion dollars approximately out of this 50 billion dollars i would say chinese debt in it is not up to five percent i can guarantee you and out of the money nigeria borrowed of recently which is the previous government during um buhari regime we got rail, we got sta stable electricity. Not that stable, but far better than the previous eight years that was boring, the previous regime. You know, Buhari did eight years. That's the previous, uh, let's say, eight years back. That was boring from the West to do these same things that we never got. At least the Chinese debt. Now we have a rail from Lagos to Kaduna. In fact, from Lagos to, to Niger. You understand because Buhari did the rail from Lagos from Portaikot to Niger. Now, and for the first time in my life, I think that was three years ago, I entered a rail. That was the first time three years ago when they completed the train network. I took a train from from, from Kaduna to Abuja, Abuja to Kaduna. It was a, a nice experience. This was the same thing the previous regime. Not this, not Buhari's regime. That is the PDP or Basanjo and Co. We're borrowing money to do. Coming to the electricity, electricity presently in Nigeria is far better than ten years ago. So, as for my as for my own observation, and as for what I'm saying, if we borrow money from China to make our roads now are even more are even more better than before. One more point: our electricity is better. Our roads are better. Our train networks are better. And our projects, be it an electro-hydro dam or whatever, they are more, they are now, at least we can now see them. Unlike before where we borrow money from the West to do a project, and they will tell you that um, you see this forest, you would be like, yeah, there should be a road from here linking this forest to the next community, but someone ate the money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, I, now I have two questions for Naji. Naji, one interesting thing is uh, I was at Staff College and one of my colleagues was Colonel Naji from Nigeria. A lot of Nigerian comes to Pakistan and we also been sending, I think, uh, people uh, in the Nigerian uh, Defense College. So, we have a yes, lot of yes, uh, yes. friends. Yeah. So, Colonel Naji, I don't know, he may become a general, but looking at your name, Naji, you pronounce Naji? Ngaji. Ngaji. Ngaji, yeah. yeah. Just call Ngaji. just just call me Jesse. Yeah, okay. So he was gonna Ngaji. Ngaji. Okay, I have two quick questions, uh, very important. One is uh, that how is the uh, uh, President Bola Tinubu's uh, tenure as compared to uh, Buhari? Hmm. And the other is what is your reading of Niger? Because we consider 
Nigeria to be the super state uh, in ECOWAS because Nigeria, I know, calls the shots and a lot of people look at Nigeria for stabilization operation. Whether it's Burkina Faso or anywhere, normally it's the Nigerian forces which move in to stabilize. So how is your reading of uh, Niger and uh, and the general perception being built up in the West that probably uh, is, is, uh, is a coup which is uh, basically paving way for Wagner Group to come in and stabilize. So is there something like that that you have felt? Well, I'll just hit the nail on the head. No no country, not even the USA. The USA has a base in, in, in Nigeria Re Re Republic. USA has a base there. You, uh, Nigeria is close. And um, West Africa are in concern. But if you see the West Africans saying, okay, they don't like it or they don't like what is happening in Niger presently. I can guarantee you, no country will send their army to Niger. Even France, that has a reasonable reason. They are their former colonial masters, you understand? And they have yeah. um, whatever ties together. France needs them. France will not send their army to Niger. That's secondly. Now, coming to our present um, president, <coughs> the West never aligned with him. We don't like him that much, but we thank God the good, every good apple has a bad side, and every bad apple has a good side. So the good side of the present regime in Nigeria, Bola Tinibu, he doesn't align with the West. He, 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 he doesn't align with the West. Even the previous government has started pulling off from the West. We started doing more of China, more of your Russia. Now, in a situation where you see a country going to Niger, or you see Wagner going to Niger, is when you see another country going into Niger. For example, let's use Mali. There was a UN peacekeepers there, which were useless. I'm sorry to say this. Practically oh, useless. Like serious. So the best option is for the country to work with an option that will give them results. This is the crazy part. You will see an African region be in peace. And when you discover that, uh, okay, they just discovered crude oil. Or they just discovered uh, lithium, or they just discovered gold, or they discovered any mineral resources in that region, then you see crisis. Now, these people carrying out this crisis are being armed, are buying weapons from unknown sources. I have no issue with that. Now, these weapons are being made in a factory. And you and I know that no African country produce RPG, no African country produce AK. No African country produce any weapon. South but Africa. Our, okay, let's say South Africa. Another but country build AK-47. Most of most of the weapons they use, most of those most of the weapons these rebels use, or those uh, militants use, or terrorist bandits or whatever we call them, are foreign made. Yes. Sometimes they use weapons that even. Nigerian police, for example, cannot use because they grade them as military-owned weapons. You understand? Now, these guys are having access to weapons that if a country wants to buy, they will have to go through a very long process. And these guys are having access to these weapons free. Secondly, the rate at which these guys use their ammunition, you feel like maybe they are packing it from the ground. Or... There is a well has stock of ammunition that they can never run out of. Now, this is my question. This region was in peace. How come all of a sudden, as a result of discovery of mineral resources, they are now breakouts, they are now uh, uh, the way the West we call them uh, freedom fighters, like what they did to Gaddafi? <laughs> it's crazy. The issue there is this. Now, we Africans, we are now clever enough. We now know that uniting will help us more than dividing. I don't think any African nation, we, I don't think Africa as a whole, we allow Libya incident to happen again on, this, on, on the present generation's watch. And as for them, even me, I won't lie to you, I supported the West, I supported NATO. Because all I had <laughs> access to them, all I had access to them was BBC, 
CNN, <laughs> and God. <laughs> so these days we leave we leave the Western. Whenever I go to the office and and uh, my colleagues be like, um, Russia, they are winning Russia. This one, that one. Uh, Russia is um Ukraine is dealing with Russia. I'll say you watch CNN, right? You say yes. So whenever you're watching CNN, take a look at the map. They will say Russia is losing, but you see Russia conquering more space on the map. <laughs> you must watch That's the PMO. You you never way. you never go wrong with the BBC. BBC is there for you always. If you need them, they're there for you. What I normally do is I recommend them to either DPA, uh, history, um, you know, any of these independents redacted, any of these independent media. I'm done with um, the, the annoying part is they will just cut only 30 seconds or 15 seconds of a clip. In the whole scene and repeat it all day, all day, all day. Look at what they did in in January six. The clip where they were showing Sherman, it was the one that he was charging. It was just the whole clip was just fifteen seconds. They repeated it for one week, and when the whole when 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 the other clips came out, police was actually escorting this guy, opening doors for him. So all this why they, they they had those clips yet police were were escorting him, but the 15 seconds they saw him charging in was what they were cutting and replaying throughout for people to like see how he caused damages and the rest. So I'm, I'm done with I'm done with I'm done with government media, I'm done with all this media stuff. And the good part there is we Africans, we now know our friends, we now know our enemies. You know, we normally call the West a rat. You know when a rat is eating your hand, it will be blowing you breeze while you sleep, and then it will be eating it, causing more damage. So we avoid the West. And I, and I like what Africans are doing generally. If you want to win a campaign presently in Africa, be anti-West for your good. That's just it. Just be anti-West. The present regime, okay, look at Niger. The whole uranium France use comes from Niger. Just imagine. Haba, just imagine. It's uncalled for. This is just the best option. Kick them out. Take over your country. Then if you like, you can like do election all over again. Just uh, we most times the best option is to try a, a new approach or a new option. We are tired. We are tired. Our leaders are tired. Even if our leaders wants to, like, um, should I say, they will say our leaders are corrupt. Everybody is corrupt. Every See, it was during Ukraine war, this present Ukraine crisis, that I know that the West is fucking corrupt. Jesus. Okay, this is what these guys are doing. <laughs> this, is, this is what these guys are doing. Their senators are the shareholders of the weapon industries. Their senators, their House of Representatives, they are deep states are the shareholders of those weapon industries that they carry their taxpayers' money. They carry their taxpayers' money to buy weapons from a company owned by their senators and their deep states and give to Ukraine. So USA can cough 200 billion for a war that is not none of their business. And USA cannot cannot fix let me just fix libya that they said if gaddafi is no more libya will be a heaven on earth look at libya today as for the past four years i would say libya was doing physical human trade physical slave trade so you killed gaddafi and then you allow libya as a country to be divided with no president but hello they are still mining crude oil in libya as we speak and it is going to europe <laughs> it's uncalled for it's uncalled for we now know what they don't want us to know they say we should go to school we have learned and we also understand we now know what they don't want us to know and nobody is a child nobody is a fool okay look at um, usa veterans most times i see them on the streets begging for arms look at the borders God, the, the only thing that will save USA presently is 
getting Trump back as a president. If not, mm -mm 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 -mm. if Trump comes back, they are safe. But if this, this, I don't know if I should call him. He's more of a comedian than than um than um than um Zelensky. The present USA president, we normally call him comedian. Like, how can a president freeze while making a speech? I just pray he shouldn't press the red button by mistake. <laughs> it's uncalled for. And the funniest part is they use Africans to learn this. You remember there was a time all the presidents they normally permit in Africa were old men, starting from Mugabe, uh, Yaradua, Buhari, um, most African president, both South African president, was old, old men that were being aided to stand. Now those old men went away. They saw that, okay, the practical they did in Africa worked. A president, like, there was a time our, pre our country was on autopilot. The president will be out on medical treatment. We don't know if it is the vice president is in control or, or we normally call them um, cabal. <laughs> that was a previous regime. But all the same, now they are using the same thing on the present president. If you ask Joe Biden about what happened yesterday, today is what? Here in Nigeria, today is not yet. If you ask Joe Biden what happened on the 22nd, or let me say on the 29th, which is yesterday, as for them, today is, um, let me say, 29, yes? Today today is 29, uh, yes? No, the entry none is good money in California. It's good money now because my brother is there. If you ask Joe Biden what happened yesterday, 29, Joe Biden will tell you, are you sure I saw yesterday? But this is the fact. USA as a country, it's not to be run by a president that cannot account for what happened yesterday. It's uncalled for. It's uncalled for. It's an insult. It's an insult. That's a typical example of puppet president. You can go ahead. I would like you guys to ask a question <laughs> because especially uh, Terhem and, and Vojdupov. So uh, we just become got a, a declaration from ECOVAS or ECO... Um, uh, so <laughs> and they said that uh, the, um, the, uh, the 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 generals the militaries have one week to uh, liberate the the previous president and restore the so-called constitutional war order we also saw the french president making today very rush accusation saying they you use uh, force to protect their interests so are you seeing, are, am I kind of previewing a kind of an action similar to Syria again? Because I said, okay. not Syria, Libya. Because you said something wait, like Libya wait. will not, not happen again. How let's do you guys use, do that? Let's, let's use um, Sudan, South Sudan and North Sudan as an example. Till the present date, oh, what they, okay, what happened in, what was it called? In Niger. All what he need to say is, I will conduct election and then fix in two months time election will be held and then postpone it and keep on postponing it. That is the same playbook the West used in Sudan till today. We all agree on that. Now coming back to what um, 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 you were saying earlier concerning the African president and past president. You both of you are perfectly right. As for the history of Nigeria, all our past presidents studied abroad. Starting from when the colonial masters were here, they took their Buhari, which is which is our previous president, abroad to study under military regime. Then you understand, under colonial masters, all our past, all African past, most African, I'll say 95% of African past president specifically past president all studied abroad plus nigeria our present president is the first president that did not study abroad per se he's actually he's actually wanted in the usa <laughs> he's actually wanted in the usa when he was contesting even he worse couldn't even, he he had to go there on that diplomatic visa that was the only thing that covered him 
So presently, most African president, look at um, this guy contesting in South Africa now, that wear red cap and red, red shirt. You understand? Most of them are now coming up that this is gener a generation that, that is not groomed by the West. They are not groomed by the colonial masters. They were born free and they want to exercise that freedom. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Work, 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 work. Go. Go. On. Work, go. On. Yeah, one is that uh, I have to take a break of 10 minutes because one of the channels has to take me on a beeper on the audio. And I'll just uh, leave a question. I'll come back after maybe 10 15 minutes because I have to come to a channel, uh, TV channel, just for 10 minutes. Uh, the question is uh, regarding Putin offering, you know, uh, debt relief of $23 billion to some of the African countries. Uh, he has waived off the debt. And I think there's also discussion on, uh, you know, the wheat deal. And uh, Putin also mentioned that colonial legacy is basically uh, an obstacle to Africa's development. So I think these are some of the things that Naji's also pointed out that Africa has that uh, sense that uh, they have to get rid of the colonial, uh, let's say, mindset, which has been controlling and plundering Africa. So President Putin's offer of uh, waving off $23 billion of uh, debt and then offering, I think, wheat to needy countries is important. So after I get a call, I'll be breaking off for 10 minutes and then I come back. Yeah. Prata, your the answer to your question about the elite in Angola. There is the elite in Angola, basically, the elite are Tutris. They live there and they study in Portugal, like the first president of Angola. But the government, the people that run the party, the empire, the path in power. These people are fucking communists. They start in Russia. So the elite in Angola got no fucking chance to take over. They listen or they fuck off. That's it. And to answer the question of Wakar about the 23 billion uh, debt that uh, Russia decided to scrap. It's not the first time. Yes, it's not the not. first time Russia is scrapping debt uh, from African countries, and in the fact, Soviet. and in, yeah, and in fact, uh, China also, but in a smaller margin, also scrapped some debt, something that the West is not able to do, because they don't want to do it. They are restructuring debt. That means they are not erasing it, but they are making it differently. So those who are really making debt trapped are the West. Yes, IMF. IMF, World Bank, a bilateral uh, uh, debt uh, yes. negotiation, whatever. The worst thing, the worst thing that's gonna happen to your country is when you accept a loan from IMF. Trust me. Oh, yeah. And by the way, by the way, Soviet Union, Soviet Union cleared all the all the debt Angola had with Soviet Union. All the debt that was billions of just, dollars. Let me just come in here, please. Sorry for cutting you off. The West right. loves con the West loves control. Let us start this from the beginning. First, there was slave trade, and then after the slave trade was abolished, they brought in a new system of control called democracy. Now you are bringing a style, a method of leadership to people that does, don't understand it. Africa never knew what is democracy. We have kings and we have uh, chiefs. That is our system of leadership. And our kings and our chiefs carried the weight of the people on their heads until the West came and corrupt them and say, okay, use the word democracy. Now with democracy, anything can happen and you cannot point finger at anybody. You can't point finger that this person do this or this person did this. You will say it is the government. Who is the government? Everybody. 
that means somebody in leadership position can fuck up and the people will say it is the government in return if you say who is the government are the people so you mean i took a decision which i'm not aware that aside after democracy came in they were putting leaders that will favor them putting in leaders that will sing their song and dance to their dance now that also got um revealed then they brought in the next slave should i not not should i call it a um, modern i i normally call it modern slavery put no, in call it, please tell a man call call them call them house niggas yeah, right that is, that is putting <laughs> someone in 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 bondage or putting someone in chains why not knowing you are in chains? it's all about what does a, a slave do work for the master you understand it's all about working for the master then came the financial aspects where okay they are now wise what can we do to keep them in bondage give them debt they cannot pay you are borrowing 100 billion and you are paying approximately 300 billion that's what imf do but they will say they are taking little little for years when you sum everything together you have paid four or five times the initial amount you borrowed now a country will borrow money and the country cannot pay the money back every year you have to be servicing the loan you're not paying the loan you are just servicing paying off the interests the capital is still there your government is working to pay imf my question is all this money they pay to imf what does imf do with the money i am it's, it's crazy then they came uh, sanction now if you a country refuse to dance to their tune they sanction you it's equal to terrorism if my country need a um, uh, one million i i as i started saying this then i got um i got off a track now nigeria a nigerian president came in power made agreements to buy one billion naira worth of drugs every year from the west and the west say okay you'll be buying 10 billion now it's a situation where um you do not buy the 10 billion worth of drugs you understand that means the next coming year even the one billion worth of drugs that is essential this is what they do to syria a country like syria at least give them what they need to survive at least give them what they need to survive now for you to take drugs to syria you have to smuggle it not that you don't have the money not that you are not buying it you buy it but you can't take it to your own country no ship with no traders and anybody that aid you will be sanctioned what is that is called bully that's been that's been a bully at the expense of innocent people that know nothing innocent children that die of common sickness like malaria like seriously how about and then that's, you are what, saying, Sota, that's what south africa just said south africa said they're not gonna let no country in the west bold them to do things they don't want to no if you do no if you want to put the session to ask no one hey i just want to say uh this panel's fire i mean we're talking about africa people from africa are popping in here and giving us the perspective uh i don't really have anything to add i'm gonna pop out for a while when y'all get to ukraine i might pop back yeah in. but so we need else... america we need americans because we need to gang up on you guy I, you know, I don't want to get yelled at anymore about all the bad <laughs> shit my country did. I mean, no, I'm kidding. But no, we I need, just say I don't want to take we need space for somebody else to come in. And, uh, we need I'll just listen. From Babylon. Um, what what Tahemi was saying it's very interesting because also the problem with the with the um, grain initiative which is uh, uh, actually uh, Tahemi it is not forbidden to export medicine to uh, to Syria, the problem, like you said, is that nobody will carry, uh, will go, to, no boat uh, will go to that port because they are afraid of being uh, of being sanctioned. And even during the the earthquake that uh, that was felt also very, we you just saw pictures of uh, of Turkey, but also Latakia and many other homes and many other cities in the north of Syria were very very badly hit and it was very difficult to bring any types of supplies they needed because even if they they even released some type of um uh sanctions in order to them but nobody people was uh, firms are so uh, scared nowadays of being sanctioned by the united states 
They don't do. They, they, the same problem with Grain Initiative. People, it is not forbidden were, for ships to go people, to, to Russia. People were doing donations through PayPal, and PayPal just blocked the donation. Things like from, that. It's amazing. See, yeah. Yeah. These people got no fucking art, you know? They, they used and abused of those instruments that they called sanctions, and they completely destroy. They don't. They, 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 they don't. They, they don't work in sense of changing they, politics. They just they, hurt people, and they, they this not United realizing. States, the, this United States senator, you see what he said. He was like, "The dollar is dying. Now, we losing our weapon of sanction. We're not gonna be able." to sanction no more country. What kind of fuckery is that? These people don't think about other people, you know? They just think of making money and bully the poor countries. This is why Africa is begging Russia. When you see a flag in African country being waved, it's not because the Russia say, yeah, you better wave a flag. It's nothing like that. The African people, depending on Russia at the moment because they think if Russia survives this sanction against the West, Africa can do better after that. This is why everyone begging for Russia, Russia, China, China, Russia, Russia, China. It's time to change. You are totally right. You are totally right. I want to wait. Wait. Oh. I want to let uh, Kiani, 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 yes, yeah, to, to, to introduce himself and later also Emmanuel if his internet holds up. 